Cardano's ecosystem continues to mature with new projects expanding outside the ecosystem, new dev nets kicking off, and new types of narratives deploying in the ecosystem, such as deep pin aggregators. As a part of today's video, I want to dive into some of the network stats highlights, but then also some of the updates surrounding the biggest builders here in Cardano. What's up, Ada Nation? Welcome to Dapp Central, your home for everything blockchain and crypto. I'm your host here, Fareed. As a part of today's video, we're diving into the latest Cardano-based updates. It's been a while since I've done a scoop, a lot of interviews in the past couple of weeks, and a lot of dedicated videos specifically touching on governance. If you guys want more information about that, please make sure and go and check those out. I'll leave the links to those down below. First and foremost, we're going to dive into the network highlights. We'll take a look here at the weekly development report. We're also going to take a quick look at tap tools to see exactly how the market's been doing, taking a brief look at the Dex volume. NFT volume and some of the top traded tokens here in the Cardano ecosystem. Following that, I want to briefly touch on Project Catalyst. We've just had the initial or the general categories um, submission deadline occur. And then we've also got a brand new category in the real world integration section. So I want to highlight some of the stats that we've seen. And if you just want to find out more about some of these proposals and you want to educate yourself, I'm also going to highlight two separate platforms that you can go ahead and use in order to do that. Now, following that, I want to talk about three specific Cardano based projects. Number one is going to be World Mobile. The AYA DevNet is officially live, meaning that anybody who holds an Earth Node NFT can basically go ahead and sign up and register and deploy right their node in order to begin earning World Mobile rewards. Now, keep in mind, this is just the DevNet. After that, we've got the testnet followed by the main net. So it's really good to see that this team has finally gotten to the stage, being able to incorporate the community and EN NFT holders. Now, that's not all. We're going to be talking about some of their air nodes as well. And then there's some other updates that I want to quickly go ahead and loop in when it comes to World Mobile. Following that, we've got Cornucopius. They're going to be attending consensus taking place in Austin, Texas. I'll be joining the team there as well. But we've got a quite we've got quite the list of updates when it comes to Cornucopius. Kicking things off with their ongoing SPO or stake pool offering. There's updates surrounding their character avatars upcoming NFT nodes and being able to actually run those nodes in order to earn the Kopi token, followed by their creator contest and their upcoming um, land rush in Solace 3 reveal. Now, in closing of today's video, I do want to touch on Nuvola, which has released a brand new roadmap. They've also gone ahead and added three additional partners since onboarding or kicking off their mission here in the deep and ecosystem with Iagon. So I want to highlight who those additional partners are and then exactly where we could potentially expect the Nuvola team to go moving forward. So this will be a much more in-depth episode. But as always, if you do enjoy updates like these, breaking down everything going on in Cardano, I would appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by and you want more content, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions, then leave them down below. If you'd like to support me here, right, in my mission to educate the broader Cardano community, I would appreciate you if you would consider delegating with the official Dapp Central stake pool, which is stake pool ticker DA. PP. Right now, you'll earn your traditional ADA rewards in addition to the Matera token, as well as the Sarah token, given the fact that the um, DAP Central Stake pool is a partner pool for both of those ongoing ISPOs. So let's go ahead and just jump right on into the first topic, which is the weekly network development report. So here we've got 170 projects launched, up one from last week. 1,358 builders, again, up one from last week with 44,000 Plutus scripts. Looking at the left-hand side there, a lot of pretty technical updates, but we do have the mention of Project Catalyst funding round number 12. And then we've also got the 19th lesson of the Haskell Bootcamp being officially published. Now we're going to take a closer look here at Project Catalyst in just a moment. But moving over into the current state of the market, as we can see, our top trending tokens include World Mobile. We've got Snek and Nuvola. Actually, two of those top three are going to be talking a little bit more about that today. And then in terms of trending NFTs, we've got the Earth Node NFTs for the World Mobile project. The Ape Society, which has just mentioned that they're actually going to be moving over to base. So I'm not sure if that's contributed here to the 30% um, downfall in terms of the valuation of those NFTs. Now, the next thing I want to do is take a look here at some of the DEX activity. As you can see, we've got over 21,000 
um, active addresses in the last 30 days alone. That is down. So unfortunate here, not as many people um, sort of staying around as we've seen a price retrace in the Cardano ecosystem. In terms of trading volume, that is also down just about the same amount, 25.88%. And then the total value locked in terms of DEXs has gone up. So interesting correlation there. MinSwap continues to dominate the space with 74% of the activity when it comes to DEXs. Switching over to NFTs, we've got 9,000 active addresses interacting with NFTs, down 14%. Trading volume is up. So it's interesting to see that even though there's less addresses, there is more trading volume. And I'm going to be keeping an eye on this, especially when we begin to have the last leg right of the actual bull run to see how these numbers compare so this is a good way to sort of document that process here as well in terms of sales we've got 32,000 sales taking place in the last 30 days down about 14 percent so looks like overall user activity is down on the blockchain again price has fallen down from about 79 cents all the way down to about 44 cents and i'm sure that people will be jumping back into the ecosystem as price does begin to reappreciate in terms of dominance here jpeg.store with a whopping 98.72 percent of the dominance okay that will wrap it up there for that first piece next we're going to talk about project catalyst so funding round number 12 has officially kicked off there was a eight to nine hour long funding round 12 kickoff party taking place in barcelona and there's a lot of really good information that came out of that make sure to go ahead and check that out i believe it was hosted by the cardano spot which basically tries to provide coverage on all the builders here in Cardano. Now, that said, we saw the kickoff taking place on April 26th. On the 29th is when submissions opened. On May 13th is when the initial proposals had to be drafted. And then the 16th, so in about 24 hours, we're going to have the actual finalization deadline. That's going to be the um, pencil down point where no additional changes can actually be made to any proposals. The community review will be taking place between May 23rd all the way through June 20th, followed by the voting period in June to July. And then we've got the results coming out on the 15th of July. Now, keep in mind that there is a brand new category, which is the Cardano Partners and Real World Integrations, where this is going to be a slightly elongated timeline, right? So because this is dealing with millions of dollars per proposal, um, they want to make sure to vet these. But then there's also going to be the input from the Intersect MBO. So anybody who's a part of Intersect or a certain group of people uh, who are part of Intersect will be able to create a short list, which then will go back over to the community where you can then vote by um, putting your ADA to use. So that submission deadline will be taking place on June 6th. So they've got a little bit over three weeks left. We've then got the short list being published by the Intersect crew, followed by voting in June. And then we've got the results coming out in July. So it's just the submission deadline, which is a little bit elongated. Now, jumping over, there is a breakdown here of some of the requirements for that brand new real world integration um, category, where there's going to be an award of anywhere between 500,000 to 2 million ADA at the most for any projects that are basically be bringing in a lot of mass adoption for Cardano. Now, these businesses have to be operating and I think generating over $5 million per year in order to be eligible. So I'm really interested to see how many proposals we're going to get. Right now, we've got over 23 in that particular category. But if we take a look at the broader space, we've got over 1200 proposals being submitted between the use cases, the MVPs, the products that are already live, the developer open as well as the ecosystem open. Now, I want to use this as an opportunity to quickly plug in Lido Nation as well as IdeaScale. If you want more information just surrounding Project Catalyst, you can head over to lidonation.com. I'll leave the link to it down below. It does a really good job of visualizing and summarizing a lot of this data. In addition, when voting actually begins, this is an awesome platform in order to quickly view how many particular votes a proposal has earned or has received. Moving over, we have the official idea scale website. Again, we've got 22 um, days left for the submission process for the RWI category, but there is only 22 hours left for the traditional or the regular category. So do keep that in mind. That will do it there for updates surrounding Project Catalyst. Next, let's talk about some Cardano based projects. First and foremost, we've got the World Mobile Project. So World Mobile officially launching their AYA DevNet. As a little bit of a background or as a little bit of a refresher, AYA will be the blockchain built using Substrate 
which is going to be hosting and processing all of the data and transactions taking place on the world mobile network. Now this will be backed by node operators, very similar to how Cardano is backed by node operators, except these will be earth node NFTs that are required in order to actually be able to run one of their nodes. So it states your attention, earth node operators, the IA DevNet is officially live with a link to their guide and their official release. Now, a lot of people were getting impatient with this project and I completely understand, right? You want things to happen pretty quickly, but this team pivoted a couple of times to make sure that they're using the right stack in order to develop their network, right? So they wanna make sure that they're able to scale thinking forward into the future and also be able to grow while providing an easy onboarding system for the earth node operators. So as you can see here, we've got the GitHub repo breaking down. We've got examples, nodes, uh, anything that you basically need an official readme breaking down how to go ahead and actually install and um, operate on the Aya DevNet. Now, Aya will be using what is called Substrate. It states here that's a blockchain framework for a multi-chain future. And one of the big positives about this is that it includes the ability, right, or support for EVM blockchains. What this basically means is that out of the gate, Aya will be interoperable with chains like Ethereum, Polygon, Optimism, Binance, Cosmos, and many others, right? Bringing a huge value proposition to anybody who wants to be interoperable or to be a supporter of the world mobile ecosystem. So it states here, Substrate enables developers to quickly and easily build future-proof blockchains optimized for any use case. It highlights technology, developers, and projects. As always, I'll leave the link to this down below if you guys wanna find out more about Substrate. The next piece here is surrounding the deployment of air nodes. So we've now got over 900 air nodes deployed in Pakistan alone. But if we take a look at the grand scheme of things, we now have over 1500 air nodes deployed. So 1588 to be exact, five in the US. And I know that that number is actually not correct. The team has multiple air nodes going up right now in Reno. They just have not been added to WMT scan. In addition, we've got 671 air nodes in Zanzibar, 912 in Pakistan, giving us that total of just above 1500. That's not all. We've now got over 2000 people also participating in their scan for points application, an easy way to provide the world mobile team with valuable information about the network, the connectivity, and the speeds, right? Whether that's up or down in a particular area. In exchange for scanning your local area for points, you earn points that you'll be able to convert into rewards. Now, I think that they may be um, actual WMT tokens. We haven't had a, a particular con uh, confirmation, excuse me, but it could also be service points that you can use directly within their third party service providers portion of the application. So it could either be the actual WMT token or potentially points that you can use for services that you may want to go ahead and use. Now, the next thing that we've got here is the Earth Node Alliance. I want to give a huge shout out here to Rob and Clover or Cal, who join me every other Saturday for live streams. But if you guys want to stay up to date with everything World Mobile on a weekly basis, they do also host what is known as the Earth Node Alliance. Now, I believe they're going to be going through a rebrand. Do keep that in mind. But if you just want to stay updated with anything related to World Mobile, not necessarily just the Earth Nodes themselves, you can go ahead and tune into those Twitter spaces every other week. Now, anytime that they're not having those spaces, we are streaming here on the channel. Go ahead and check out the live tab here on my page for some of those recent conversations. That will bring us to a close there for updates surrounding the World Mobile Project. As always, if you guys do enjoy updates like these, I would appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by Dapp Central and you want more content like this, breaking down everything in Cardano, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions or want to share your opinion, then leave a comment down below. Next, we've got Cornucopius. This team continues to build and push the limits here within the gaming and metaverse space. Now they just announced their expansion into the base ecosystem, and we're actually going to see them participating in consensus. This is one of the largest global crypto based events taking place this year in Austin, Texas, between May 29th all the way through May 31st. I have the pleasure of being able to attend. I'll be sitting down with the Cornucopius team 
following them around, seeing exactly how people receive this particular project. But what's really interesting here is that there's a mention of a Kopi airdrop on base. So I'm going to be reaching out to some of the members here on the team to get a better understanding of what exactly that entails and how people can participate. But if you're going to be in consensus, number one, make sure to leave a comment down below. Number two, let me know exactly where you're going to be at. But number three, make sure to go ahead and stop by booth number 810 for the airdrop as well as some awesome gameplay. So I'm going to make sure to cash in on that airdrop and I'll share my experience with you guys following consensus. Next, we've got a brief bit here surrounding the ongoing Kopi SPO or stake pool offering. This is their second stake pool that they've spun up. The first is just COPI in terms of the ticker. This new one is COPIC and they now are offering 115% bonus for anybody who's delegating to that particular stake pool. Now, this is basically going to be rewarding in Kopi, not ADA. So there's a 99% margin currently set. But if you delegate, you'll be earning 115%, right? So a little bit more than you would with traditional ADA rewards in terms of Kopi. So do keep that in mind. Next, we've got a brief piece here surrounding their notes. And I want to plug in Kopi Cafe episode number 91. So this team has just revealed Solace 3 and a huge, huge, huge open world game here. I'm going to play some content here just for you guys in a minute. But leading up to this, right, there's going to be a need or an influx of people downloading and actually playing the Cornucopius game. Now, right now, it's about 18 to 20 gigs, depending on different builds that come out. And that takes anywhere between 20 to 30 minutes, depending on your internet connection in order to actually download the game. Now, as a node operator, they're going to be basically distributing the ability for people to um, host portions of the existing builds, making it a lot faster for anybody who's downloading the game. So you can purchase these NFTs. There's an ongoing sale right now on the base ecosystem. I believe the sale has concluded here on Cardano, or at least the majority of the rounds have concluded. But I've actually scooped up one of these for full transparency. And I see this as an awesome way to number one, contribute to Cornucopius, but the number two, a way to earn the Kopi token extremely passively. Now, it does require a little bit of technical know how, and the team has actually thought about how to address that. So as a node operator, you can run your own node. They're going to be providing a rewards deck as well as more information about how to actually set up your node. But if you're not technical, right, you can go ahead and delegate to a node. Um, operator. So very similar to how you would delegate your ADA to a stake pool. Um, but however, you'll be delegating your NFT that gives you the right to operate a node to a node pool operator. I want to make sure I'm using the right word there. So with delegating to a node pool operator, you'll basically be giving them a cut of some of, the, of your rewards, but you also don't have to go or worry about the headache of actually setting up the node, monitoring it and all of that other stuff. Now, some of the requirements um, will be that you have an in-game account that you also hold a little bit of Kopi. And I think there may be one more thing that I'm missing there. So that will do it there for updates surrounding this. Make sure to go ahead and check out the latest Kopi Cafe. The team does break this down in a lot more detail. And next we've got the celebrity creator contest. So the avatar creator was released not too long ago. One of their biggest updates so far. If you're not aware, we've got the ability to race. You can now go ahead and customize your character with hundreds of thousands of different possibilities and variations. There's also the deployment of the inventory system, just a lot coming out from the world, not from the world, but from the cornucopius game, excuse me. So make sure to go and check that out. But they had a pretty cool um, competition where they basically opened it up to the community to recreate or to create um, avatars that would mimic real world people. So here we've got Lady Gaga. There were many other submissions that I saw floating around Denzel Washington, Keanu Reeves, um, a lot of different variations, and it looks extremely accurate, right? So really, really proud of the Cornucopius game and what they've been able to achieve in such a short time for such a massive game. Now, as I get ready to close this last piece out, I do want to go ahead and play some of the content here from the latest Kopi Cafe. Again, make sure to go ahead and check this out on your own. And I am speeding it up, you know, just so you guys can get a sense here. But just look at how amazing these graphics are. Look at how crisp, how clear. And they even mentioned like those mountains there all the way in the background. You can literally walk all the way to that. Now, that might take you a couple of minutes, right? But it's not just there for a visual, you know, effect. It's an actual piece of the land that you can actually travel to. So here they sped up the gameplay. And just to give you an idea of how vast the land is in in the next coming months, right? I believe this will be in the July slash August timeline. We're going to have the ability to finally go ahead and claim your lands plots. 
So if you guys recall, the team had sold a lot of land NFTs a while back. I'm sure that the price is probably going to start to uptick on those as people, you know, go back on the open market and sort of pick up any sales on NFT land plots. But depending on the rarity, you'll have the ability to go ahead and decide where you want your land plot to be. There's going to be an entire um, land rush platform where you can go ahead and basically identify where you want your land to be. So awesome to see how beautiful, how beautiful this looks here. A lot of hours going into the shout out to David and the entire development team, obviously with Rob and Greg also at the helm guiding the development of this game. I think that will be it there. Um, in closing, they are going to be implementing or adding in some updates specifically for beards, hats, etc. with their avatar creator. And then in terms of the NFT notes, I actually forgot to mention the date. Those will be coming online, I believe, on, let's see here, July 1st. So make sure to go ahead and get ready for that. The last and final project I want to highlight as a part of today's video is Nuvula Digital. So I've had Raul de Benedettis here on the channel um, to break down what Nuvula is. It's a deep in aggregator. So what they do is, again, very similar to a node pool operator, um, like I was just mentioning in Cornucopius. They take a lot of the hard work out and a lot of the technicalities out for anybody who doesn't want to be um, running a node or who just isn't technical, right? Um, but they still want access to Deepin. So it's literally the best of both worlds. If you want access to one of the fastest growing sectors here in this space, make sure to go ahead and check out Nuvula Digital. Now we've got V2 of the roadmap here, breaking down their NVL token sale that's been completed. Their second partner, which has been Orcfax and Oracle Protocol here, they just sold their 100 validator licenses, which gives you the right to operate a Orcfax node or validator. And in doing so, you're publishing facts on chain and receiving the fact token as a reward. Now, next, we've got the deployment of their global scale operation for Iagon. They've deployed, I think, over a couple hundred terabytes of data, which is pretty impressive. And then they just announced their first cross-chain partnership, which I'm going to dive into in just a second. We've also got partnership number four, as well as a staking and rewards dashboard. And then an interesting proposal coming in surrounding collateralized rewards in lending and borrowing. They've also mentioned their Nuvola Drive, which is very similar to something like Google Drive, using a lot of the tech which it seems like at least from Iagon. And then last but not least, we've got a second Nuvola product. So this team has really been on fire. I was surprised at how quickly they were able to gain favor and adoption here in this ecosystem. Moving along, we do have a wallet breakdown. If you're just interested in finding out more about all the assets currently being held, they have gone ahead and utilized the ADA handle standard. Good to see them supporting other builders here in the ecosystem. Next, we've got Nuvula and Orcfax partnering up. I just mentioned this. They'll be operating uh, a handful of nodes. It looks like two of them providing their NVL token holders a portion of those rewards. So now if you hold NVL, you earn the Orcfax token and you earn Iagon. And then you're also going to earn the let me see here i actually passed it up the minutes network token so this is their third their third partner excuse me and they're going to be operating 13 switch nodes and 15 validation nodes and they've acquired 800,000 of the mnt tokens now the minutes network is being operated and run by josh watkins which is mickey's i believe younger brother um, but they both got a lot of uh, technical expertise when it comes to the telco and communications industry, right? So he was working with World Mobile, decided recently to branch out, and they left uh, amicably, right? They're brothers at the end of the day, but he's going to be kicking off Minutes Network. So we're going to see Nuvola also operating as their third um, partner. Um, now, if I jump back over here, I did want to highlight the collateralization hub, which I mentioned was on their proposal or on their roadmap there. So they've got a proposal for Project Catalyst funding round number 12, and it's an inter interesting proposition collaborating with the Ada Anvil team. So Ada Anvil is the staking platform here in the Cardano ecosystem, but it states here that what their goal is to do is to take all the assets that are currently staked and earning rewards through Ada Anvil and being able to use that as collateral, right? So when you're staking something, your assets are just sitting there, not really working for you, but being able to collateralize that and potentially borrow against that would be an interesting proposition. So it states here, there are a large number of assets within every blockchain that are being staked, committed to LP, or locked in a similar fashion, awaiting a final reward. Currently, over 190,000 assets on Cardano are locked in an Anvil non-custodial staking platform. As time goes on, users who have staked assets should be able to unlock those guaranteed future rewards before they're due or trade based on the current market value. Therefore, they plan on creating a central hub that can carry out these functionalities 
with the final goal of being able to collateralize anything from any other protocol. So interesting proposition there. Again, I'm going to be doing a little bit more of a deep dive and bringing to your guys' attention some of the biggest and brightest proposals here for funding round number 12. We also have the Nuvola team applying to be listed on CoinGecko, um, which is probably one of the bigger um, marketplaces, right, for finding information about the market cap of tokens, assets in circulation, there's any sort of resource there. So pretty cool to see that happening. In closing, we've got over 7,000 uh, IAG tokens being earned already. Now, keep in mind, this is slightly outdated. This is from the 18th of April, so I'm sure that that's well over that now. But as you guys can see here, this team appears to be running um, the infrastructure already, providing over 400 terabytes of storage. That will do it here for today's video, breaking down some of the biggest and brightest updates here in the Cardano ecosystem, kicking things off here with just the market, reviewing the network developments, talking about Project Catalyst, Cornucopius, World Mobile, and Nuvola. If you appreciate top of this type of content or you learn anything along the way, I would appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by and you do want more, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions surrounding anything we've talked about as a part of today's video, then make sure you leave a comment down below. That said, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.